In this video, I'm going to keep talking about the collections framework and we're going to talk about sets. So sets are a type of collection that stores unique data. And the way it determines if data is unique is kind of tricky. So let's take a look at a set. And what I'm going to do is uh, start typing set. This is the interface again. So you want to use java.util.set and you'll have a uh, um, a kind of object you're going to put into it. So we'll make a set of strings and we'll say new uh, hash set because you can't actually do a set. It's an it's an interface. So you actually have to do an implementation class. And the one that we'll go over is called hash set. So again, it gives you this kind of diamond operator here. It's optional to put the class in here, but you don't have to do that. Um, so sets have add and and um, and get. So we'll just do we'll do a strings and add um, test add whoops test two and let's go ahead and print out the size of the set. So the size is two, as we'd expect. These are unique strings, so the size should still be two. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is try to add a string that already exists in here. And I'll add test again. Let's see what happens. Um, so what I'll do is just copy this uh, size. So we'll see, um, we'll add two strings, then we'll print the size, and then we'll add another duplicate string and print the size, see what happens. Right, so even though it was a separate string instance, it actually did not add it, right? So the, the um, thing that might make this a little bit more obvious here is that test, this is a string instance. This is a separate string instance. And this is also a separate string instance, even though it maps to the same thing. So you can see hash set is doing some calculation to figure out if a string matches another string. And what it's actually doing is it's calling hash code and then if hash code matches, it's calling equals on the object. Um, so let's do the, let's do one more example here, and I'm going to create a class called dog. So we'll create a class called dog, and inside of dog, I will give the dog a name, and we'll just make this a public string name, and I'll give the dog a constructor. And we'll go to source, uh, generate constructor using fields, and we'll generate the constructor with name. Okay, good. And now we're going to do another um, a set, set of dogs, uh, and I'll put a public static main void, or void main, and uh, we'll create a dog set here. So I'll do set of dog uh, hash set right okay and we're going to say um, dog uh, d1 the first dog will be Fido whoops and the second dog will be Snoopy All right, and what we're going to do is add both of these dogs into the set. So we'll say dogs.add uh, d1. Then we'll say dogs.add d2. And I'm going to simply print out the um, size of the dog set. dog size 2, right? 
So let's create another dog and we'll call it D3. And what I'm going to do is name the dog the same. So I'm gonna say Fido and again, we will add the dog. So we'll say uh, dogs.add d3. And what you would expect is that the dog would be uh, a duplicate, right? The only field in here is name, and the name is a duplicate of the other dog. So you wouldn't particularly want this dog to go in here in your set. But what you'll see is it does. So there we go from two to three. And that's because if you don't implement hash code in equals, then you don't uh, let the set understand what it can compare against. So let's go ahead and do that. Because what it's actually doing is looking at the memory reference location. And unless it's the exact same dog, it won't work. So in this case, you can see um, if we were to say dogs.add and we're, we try to add D2 again, then the set size would not change. But because we haven't implemented equals and hash code, if we add a new dog, because it's a new memory reference, it'll, it'll count as a separate dog. So let's go ahead and do that. It's actually as easy as doing source, um, generate hash code and equals, and we'll generate it from the name. And you'll see it generates a lot of very complicated looking code. It's actually very simple. It's just calling hash code on name. Name is a string, and string already has a hash code method created. And same with equals, it's just comparing each field uh, on name, and it's doing some null checks first, just some sanity checks. Um, so let's go ahead and look at our set of dogs again, and um, we'll see now what happens if I have Fido and I add a duplicate Fido. Even though it's a separate memory reference, if it's the name Fido, we should compare it and say it's the same dog. So if I run this again, you'll see it discarded it, right? So it completely discarded that dog. Um, and we can just step through the code real quick if you don't believe me here. Um, we'll go ahead and do debug as job application. And So I'll press F6 to go to the next line. I will press F6 again. And now I have this, um, this, this set of two dogs. They're not added, but now they're both added into that dog's set. So now you can see them both in here. And I have the memory reference displayed. And you'll see I've got another dog, this D3. The memory reference location is 2FF4AD. This one was C, A, 7, and so on. And the first one was 2, F, F, uh, something else. Right. So interestingly, um, the JVM itself has done some uh, manipulation to, or done some calculation to see that the equals compares. So the memory reference is even pointing to the same place at this point now that we have implemented equals in hash code. So the hash set essentially discards it. So you might be wondering how exactly is um, hash set working? And it's interesting that if you look at the source code of HashSet, I'm on a website called Grep Code that has all the Java code, um, the, all the Java source code up here. If you look, it's interesting that underneath the HashSet, it's actually a hash map. So rather than creating their own uh, code for HashSet, they've just reused hash map. And what they're doing is just using the uh, key field for the hash map. And what happens in the hash map, when you do a put, it's going to take the key and hash, it's going to look at the hash code of the key. So essentially, by implementing hash code here, we've enabled the hash set to compare whether or not these dogs are unique. And that's generally how sets work. Sets have a remove method, of course, too. They have a get, they have an add, um, but you can think of a hash set 
simply as kind of an array that uh, enforces uniqueness. And the way it enforces uniqueness is by uh, looking at the hash code and the equals methods. Thanks for watching.